John Foon tells of a time when he was out meditating in the forest. One night he set up his tent, and it's one of the customs of the forest monks that before you set up your tent, you check carefully to make sure there are no insects nearby, no anthills that would disturb you. Look around, make sure there's no rain in sight. If there is, you're trying to find a sheltered place. Because once you've set up your tent, and setting it up here means running a string from one tree to another tree and then hanging the, the tent like an umbrella from the, the string. Once you've set up your tent, you don't move. So he was meditating, and at midnight this sudden rainstorm came up. So he took off all of his robes except for his underrobe, put them into his bowl to keep them dry, and then sat there as the wind blew the rain into his mosquito net. And his meditation theme was, the body is wet, but the mind's not wet. The body is wet, but the mind's not wet. He was able to get into good concentration, where the mind wasn't wet at all. But it's an important lesson. We tend to glom things together in our present moment experience. The pain is the same thing as the body, or the cold is the same thing as the mind. The mind is cold, when actually it's the body is cold. Heat and cold have to do with physical things. The mind is something mental. And try to make that distinction, the same with the distinction between pain and the body. There are body sensations, which are the four elements, and then there's pain. Pain is something else. They're there, but they're different kinds of perceptions. And if you can investigate to see that these things are different, the fact that you're investigating means you're not just sitting there taking these things in. You're not victimized by them, and you're not glomming them together. As what I said, one of the signs of insight and one of the signs of discernment is you see things as separate. All these different things you are glomming together are really separate things. And when you see them as separate, then they're not so big and overpowering as they seemed. So learn to take this approach, a more proactive approach, where not, you're not just on the receiving end of things. Because after all, the mind is a fabricator. It keeps creating its experiences out of the raw material available to it. And our problem is that we do this in ignorance, and we do it without as much skill. And so this process of fabricating, you might call it glomming. Might be a good translation for Sankara. We glom a lot of things together that weigh us down. So we need to learn how to take a more proactive, aggressive approach toward them. You find that these glommed things begin to separate out. And this requires energy, which is why you can't be doing this all the time. You have to find a place where you can rest every now and then. But it's alternating the rest with the investigation like this. That's how both tranquility and insight grow. So here's a chance today. It's cold, wet outside. But the mind doesn't have to be cold. The mind doesn't have to be wet. And see where you're putting those things together, where you don't have to. That lifts a huge burden off the mind.